These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Well, um, maybe we can start. You can tell me what you remember about buffers. So, what do you remember about buffers? What is a buffer? How do you make a buffer? What's the purpose of a buffer? Um, what I remember is that it's either a weak base or weak acid. Um, and it can keeps the pH from changing significantly if you add more of a strong base or strong acid. And um, the way you make it would be to start with, out with um, one that has a pKa similar to the pH that you want. And um, you try to find the concentration of acid to conjugate base um, to make the pH that you want using the HH equation. Okay, good. Well, that actually, that, that seems like a pretty accurate uh, discussion, uh, uh, buffers, that that's really the key things that you need to know. So what is the purpose of a buffer? A buffer is a solution that is resistant to changes in pH. So normally if you take a solution and you dump in a bunch more acid, the pH will plummet. Or if you dump in a bunch of base, the pH will rise. But if you dump acid or base into a buffer solution, the pH doesn't change very much. The solution is buffered against changes in pH. Now, how do you create a buffer? The first thing you said was, wasn't quite right, but then I think you got to, to, to what the key was. You started by saying to use a weak acid or a weak base. Um, but a weak acid by itself wouldn't be a buffer, and a weak base by itself wouldn't be a buffer. In order to get a buffer, you use a weak acid together with its weak conjugate base, or you use a weak base together with its weak conjugate acid. So you want both of those together. And when do buffers usually work best? Um, what, what do you want to be the relative concentrations of the acid and the conjugate for it to work? Yeah, the buffer works best when their concentrations are about the same. So the best buffers, um, you, you get the, the, the best buffering when you have about the same amount of the acid, the weak acid and its conjugate. One thing that you said that was correct that's very important that students sometimes forget, you have to use weak acids. Um, you can't use a strong acid or a strong base. You use a weak acid and its conjugate, which would also be weak. So for example, uh, a common example, well, so could you use hydrochloric acid to make a buffer? No. No, because this is a strong acid. Could you use acetic acid to make a buffer? Well, yes, because acetic acid is a weak acid. This is one of the common weak acids that are used. All of a sudden, I'm blanking out as to what the condensed formula for acetic acid usually is. Yeah, here we go. So here's how you would usually see acetic acid written in this term. So we would use weak ac we would use acetic acid, and what else? Well. You would use the deprotonated form of acetic acid, which is the conjugate base of acetic acid. This is called acetate. So we would have uh, a solution with both acetic acid and acetate. So we could say that we're using both the weak acid and its conjugate base. However, this is a little misleading because you wouldn't just put in acetate by itself because that would have an unbalanced charge. What you would actually put in is a salt where the acetate is balanced by a counter ion or spectator ion and that's why oftentimes this is described as a weak acid and its conjugate salt. Uh, but that's really the same as saying the weak acid and its conjugate base. The salt is just the term that you use when you're focusing on the fact that this is an ionic compound with the, the sodium over here. Uh, but in any case, the key thing is that we're using the weak acid and its conjugate or the weak base and its conjugate. And it looks like you're already remembering the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Well, what is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation? What does that tell us? pH is equal to pKa plus log of conjugate acid, or conjugate, sorry, conjugate base over acid. That's 
That's right. We would want to put these in brackets because we're putting in the concentration of the base and the concentration of the acid here. Incidentally, if you add more base, forget about the equation for a second. If you add more base, what would common sense would tell you is happening to the pH going up or down? Because you're, um, you're going to become more basic. That's a higher pH. Well, that would allow you to figure out who goes on top here, the base or the acid. We can see there's a direct relationship between the concentration of base and the pH. So you were right when you decided the base has to go in the numerator. If you had put the base into the denominator, then there would be an inverse relationship between the pH and the base. So if you forget who goes on top and who goes on the bottom, we should be able to work that out. There's another version of this equation. seen this. If you wanted to focus on the pOH, you could use this other version of the henderson hasselbalch equation. Well, now there would be an inverse relationship between the base and the pOH. So now the base would go on the denominator. And here, since we're focusing on bases, we would use the pKB instead of the pKA. But you don't, you don't need this all that much because, of course, you know if you find the pH, you can always find the pOH pretty simply. So we can just stick with the simpler equation. Well, let's say that you do what we said we should do a second ago and use equal concentrations of base and acid. What would the pH be if you use equal concentrations of base and acid? Okay. Yeah, because these two would now be one. And what is the logarithm of one? That explains what you were saying a second ago. You said, how do you decide what a good buffer system is? How do you decide what acid to use? Well, one good thing to do is look in a table and try to find an acid whose pKa is the same as the pH that you're aiming for. Uh, because then if you put in equal amounts of the acid in the base, you'll get the pH that you want. We just proved that from our equation. Well, those are the basic ideas for buffers. It seemed like you already had a pretty good grasp of the basics, so maybe we should take a look at some of the problems that are giving yeah. you difficulty yeah. with that. Do you have any of those? Now, actually, to get started with this, we, we should have explained why buffers work. Um, we should explain how a buffer prevents changes in pH. So let's say we have a, uh, an acetic acid acetate buffer. And let's say that you add hydrochloric acid to that buffer. Well, how is that, how, um, what would happen if you just added this to water? Well, if you add hydrochloric acid to water, Acid will react with the water to produce hydronium, which means that the pH has gone down because the pH is the negative log of the hydronium concentration. So clearly, if you add uh, hydrochloric acid to water, that lowers the pH. Now, why doesn't this happen when we add hydrochloric acid to this buffer? What's going to happen instead when we add hydrochloric acid to this buffer? That's right. So if we added the hydrochloric acid to water, who would react with each other? The hydrochloric acid and the water. Well, who's going to react when we add the hydrochloric acid to this buffer solution? The hydrochloric acid and the, um, I don't remember the name, but the conjugate base. That's right, the acetate. Good. We know that acids react with bases, not other acids. So this is going to react with the base. Basically, it's going to protonate this acetate to make acetic acid. Well, notice, what did we not produce? We didn't produce hydronium. And therefore, we're not going to have that decrease in pH. All right, now, this is a slight oversimplification. 
there will be a small amount of hydronium produced. We're slightly oversimplifying things here. pH will go down, but it won't go down nearly as much as it would and did in this situation. And roughly speaking, we can see why most of the hydrochloric, instead of reacting with water, is going to be reacting with the acetate, and therefore is not producing hydronium, which is where the pH, uh, which is where the, uh, which is, hydronium is what determines what the pH is going to be.